Welcome back, those of you who just watched TCU beat Texas Tech. Tech still goes to the Cotton Bowl at 6-5. and five. Right now, it's time for number one Nebraska against Oklahoma, Mark Jones and Tim Brandt. We are in Norman, Oklahoma for one of the most hotly contested battles in all of college football. The Oklahoma Sooners, who come into this game with a record of 6-4, and four, host the number one ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers. A win for Nebraska, and it's simple, folks. They go to the Orange Bowl in Miami to take on maybe the Miami Hurricanes for a shot at the national title. Oklahoma, though, still entertains bowl hopes. Tim, many different factors and keys to victory for the respective teams. Absolutely. When you sit down and you look at this game, you have to wonder what's going to take place. With 28 turnovers this season with penalties and broken assignments, Oklahoma has never had a perfect as they have to be today, but they do have a lot of confidence coming in. Now, Nebraska is heavily favored, and that's for a reason. The Huskers have been dominant by executing flawlessly with a lot of gifted athletes, and if they do that today, they should win. Obviously, they are the heavy favorite. Nebraska comes into this game two touchdown favorites. One of the largest spreads ever in this series. And you're looking at a head coach in Nebraska for 22 years. A class man, quiet spoken Tom Osborne. 9 and 13 all time against the Sooners. And there's a look at the man who will be stepping down after this season, Gary Gibbs. He lasted five and a half years. This is his sixth season, just one and four against Nebraska. Strange the way it all happened at his press conference on Tuesday after 30 minutes of the press conference pulled out a sheet of paper and read his resignation. The players found out that way, as did some of the assistant coaches. But, you know, had a great visit with him yesterday. He said he wanted to take the focal point off him and the speculation and put it back on the players where it belongs. This game is so huge to fans both regionally and nationally. And head coach Tom Osborne helped put this game in perspective for us yesterday. We've got a lot of riding on it, and that uh, we uh, would like to get back down the Orange Bowl and try to win the whole thing. Obviously, this this game is stands in the way. So, uh, I think Oklahoma, a very similar situation to Iowa State. We played them a couple weeks ago, and they played their heads off. You know, it was their last game for last home game for their coach and their seniors, and I'm sure same situation here. It'll be a, be a very emotional time for uh, Gary Gibbs, the coaches and players. And, Folks, seven of the last 11 games between these two clubs have been decided by 10 or fewer points. We are set for the opening kickoff. The 75th renewal of Oklahoma against Nebraska. Scott Flatton will kick it off for the Sooners, and here it is. This is Clinton Childs. Childs with a decent return out to the 30-yard line, and that's where the Cornhusker offense will start the day off. A tackle made by Travian Smith of Oklahoma. And here's a look at the starting quarterback, Brooke Barringer of Nebraska, 6'4", 210-pound junior from Goodland, Kansas. A guy who has come in and done an outstanding job filling in for Tommy Frazier. He is 6-0 as a starter. Ten touchdown passes, four interceptions on the year. Backs lining up out of that all-familiar eye for Nebraska. Beringer on the waggle, keeps it himself on the bootleg and makes it out to the 39-yard line. A nice pickup on first down. Lucky making the tackle. We are in Norman, Oklahoma, as we are just underway. It's the Sooners and the Huskers. I'm Mark Jones, along with Tim Brandt and Dean Blevins. An outstanding matchup featuring two of the most storied teams in college football. Oklahoma comes in with a record of 6-4. and four. Nebraska, a picture-perfect 11-0. Owen Field is the site. Second down and one for Nebraska with the ball. Double tight end, Sean Alford. This is Lawrence Phillips. Still on his feet, spinning out to the 48-yard line. Phillips has run for 1,672 yards coming into this game. We talked about him earlier, but Abdul Muhammad is a dangerous game-breaking receiver for Nebraska. He wears number 27. Meanwhile, up front, Brendan Stye and Zach Wiegert are two of the best in college football. They call those two guys the pipeline. Follow them, and you'll get to where you want to go. Nebraska on its second play getting the first down. They've run two plays in this ball game. Oklahoma kicked it off. They go with double tight ends again. Here's Phillips. And he's stuffed with the 47-yard line. 
The Oklahoma Sooner defense coming up big on that play. The tackle made by Broderick Simpson from his linebacking spot. Cedric Jones, though, up front is the sack leader for Oklahoma. He has 14 coming into this game. Simpson just made that last tackle. He's joined by Freeman. Peters, who is the leading tackler on the team, and Sterling Lucky. In the secondary, the guy to watch is Darius Johnson. He has four interceptions coming into this game. He is tops in the Big Eight. Second down. They go trips right this time. Eric Alford, the tight end, a good receiver. And that's who they go to. Alford drops it, though, at midfield. You won't see that happen often. Alford is a usually sure-handed receiver, but he dropped that one on first down. So far, Nebraska's just been dominant up front. There's no pressure on Barringer at all. This ball is just a little bit low, but still should have been caught. Alford with 12 receptions this year. They don't use him that often as you look at Gary Gibbs in his last home game here at Oklahoma. Nobody said, Tim, it was going to be tough following a legend. A guy like Barry Switzer who set some high standards here at Oklahoma. Third down and ten. Out of the shotgun is Brooke Beringer. Lots of time, and he's sacked back at the 34. Tyrell Peters and Martin Chase. That is only the fifth sack against Nebraska all year. Look at this. That offensive line is sensational. But you can't pin this on the offensive line. That was a coverage sack by Oklahoma. Peters just kept coming, kept coming. Barringer took too long to throw, and Peters gets his second sack of the year. Darren Erstad will punt it for Nebraska now, and Darius Johnson is standing at his own 24 for the Sooners. Lots of pressure, but he gets it off. And it takes a fortuitous bounce for Nebraska. A very good bounce, and Tim... That's a no-no, isn't it, one if you're of, Oklahoma? One of the four don'ts of the kicking game. Don't be all sides. Don't rough the kicker. Don't let the ball hit the ground. And don't clip. That ball should have never hit the ground. Nebraska pins him back 20 extra yards because of that. The starting quarterback for Oklahoma is Garrick McGee. He wears number eight. McGee, 6'4", 190 pounds out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And he needs just two completions to break the school record for completions in a season. Yeah, he's been on a roll lately, but eight touchdowns, 11 interceptions for the year early on, inconsistent. Backs out of the eye. That's James Allen off tackle to the right. Makes it out to the 12-yard line. James Allen is the lightning. Gerald Moore is the thunder. Michael McDaniel starts at tight end along with Albert Hall and P.J. Mills. Yeah, but lightning hit a tree. Allen's playing with a broken wrist today. Up front, Tim, it's going to be so important for that offensive line of Oklahoma to protect Garrick McGee. I think Oklahoma, to have any shot today, has to break all tendencies and play wild, aggressive football and has to limit the turnovers and penalties. Gain of one on first down, second and nine, play action. McGee sells the fake and goes up top. And he's picked off. So much for that. Kareem Moss with the first turnover of the game. Kareem Moss, the rover, just played center field and waited for that one to fall into his arm. Talked about McGee's inconsistency. Eight touchdowns, now 12 interceptions. This isn't the Nebraska defense of old, where they used to be big guys and they play a lot of zone. Now it's one of the quickest defenses you'll see. They can cover, man. Here comes the safety. Watch the right side of your screen. 20, 29 is Moss, and he gets his first interception of the year. Nebraska going with their open formation. No tight ends. Backs out of the eye. This is Phillips out to the 49. You know, it never fails. You talk about a guy's streak of throwing passes without an interception, and bingo, he throws a pick. It's the old jinx. We're just underway here in the first quarter. I'm Mark Jones along with Tim Brandt and Dean Blevins. Lawrence Phillips with a very healthy average of 152 yards per game. No doubt he'll be a Heisman Trophy candidate next year. You know, in the first series that Nebraska had it, the Oklahoma defense played quite well, but here they are back on the field again with no break. And Nebraska's offense working with a shorter field this time. All of the 38. They hand it off to the fullback, Corey Schlesinger. 230-pound senior. Gains about two yards. North Carolina State in a thriller over Virginia. They went by a field goal. What a year for TCU. Teams in the yellow, the winners. Things not going so well for Air McNair. 
You know, Nebraska could have the best offensive line we've seen all year. And we've seen some good ones. They average 359 yards rushing per game. It is third down and four. And they line up with four wideouts. The option, Beringer keeps it himself, and he's got the first down. Bit of a surprise there, Tim Brandt. Atkins making the tackle for the Sooners, but Beringer keeps it himself. If you're playing defense for Oklahoma, I don't know how you can be surprised like that. That's a play that they run a lot. And Beringer, although he's not Tommy Frazier running the option, he started six of seven games since Frazier was sidelined. And the game he missed was against Kansas State. He had a collapse young. He's a tough kid. He gets the job done. He's a, probably a better passer than runner, but he is a quality quarterback. He does have decent speed. He runs a 4 6 5 40. And he gets the first down. Play action. Beringer with all kinds of real estate. Brought down at the 27 yard line. He's right near the first down marker. Depends on the spot. Anthony Fogel, the free safety, came up to make the tackle for the Sooners. 9.51 remaining in the opening period. Zeros on the scoreboard. It's still early in the ball game, but the, the tone of the game has already been set. Nebraska is a big, strong, physical club. They dare you to stop them. They know they've got a tremendous amount of talent. And right now, Oklahoma looks flat, looks a little bit disheveled, as you would suspect, on the same week their coach says he's resigning and leaving. It doesn't even tell you. But right now, they're just unemotional. Defense had a good stand early. Then they can't stop them. And as you look at this, I mean, we're talking about Nebraska being one of the best, the best From in the, the country. And the rushing offense is second to none. First down for the Cornhuskers. Matt Shaw checking into the ball game along with Cluster Johnson, Abdul Muhammad coming out. A lot of Cornhusker fans made the trip down from Lincoln. They drove some eight and a half hours to make it here this afternoon. And that might account for why there are some very good attendance figures here floating around today. the option. Beringer keeps it. This time he doesn't find that much success. He loses a yard back to the 29. Tyrell Peters, the team's leading tackler, making the stop that time. Yeah, and there's a guy that's playing with emotional. Tyrell Peters is the guy that got the sack earlier, his second of the year. He's 6'1", 218 pounds, just a sophomore. He knows regardless of what coach comes in to Oklahoma, he's going to be a big-time player. He is playing well so far in this first quarter. Under nine minutes to play in the first period. Wins out to the wide side of the field. Three wide receivers in for Nebraska. Barrier to pass, and he shuffle passes it to Phillips, who stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. And look who it is again. It's our guy, Tyrell Peters. Peters was shadowing him all the way. His key is the back. There's man coverage on the outside. He's going to take the back. Stay with him. He slides to the right, slides to the right. Here's the underneath pass. Bingo. Right there. Just tuck the tail, sky the eyes. That's a textbook tackle. Tyrell Peters playing very, very well early on. Third down and 11 now. We'll have to see if Nebraska looks a little slower today. This is their first game all season on grass. Previous 10 have been on artificial surfaces. Beringer, lots of time. Fires incomplete for Muhammad at the 25. And it'll be fourth down. Peters again in on the coverage that time. This is a big stop for the Sooners. And Peters is the guy. I'm not sure pass interference should have been called here if at all the pass was catchable. <laughs> Muhammad, the wide receiver, made the mistake of coming underneath. And Peters just clobbers him. Watch Peters now. Muhammad will come out of the right of your screen. Here he comes. Boom! There's the hit. That's a slobber knocker. Then here comes the ball afterwards. And that ball was catchable. It should have been passed to the fair. Peters said, uh, little man, this is my neighborhood. You don't come here without asking. Guarantee you Muhammad will have his head on the swivel next time he comes through there. Darren Erstad into attempt a field goal from 46 yards out. They fake it. Terman, the backup quarterback, did not get the first down on the run. Oklahoma gets the ball. Another look at a pivotal play so far in the early going. Terman, nothing doing.
No score. The fake field goal. Great call down in the four down area. You're kicking into the wind. But watch this player right here, the outside guy. If he comes down and throws a block on number nine, Fogle, they get the first down. Instead, he folds back. Now watch. Here he goes out in the flat. They pick him up. So they say, all right, ice, ice. They start to run. Now watch. He folds back instead of picking up Fogle right there. Had he gotten that block, they get the first. And he may have had Muhammad open downfield. Meanwhile, Oklahoma first and 10 from the 20. Gerald Moore, that's Thunder, out to the 24-yard line. A gain of four on first down. Moore's coming off a big performance. Last week, he scored five touchdowns and had 151 yards against Iowa State two weeks ago. Troy Dumas making the tackle. He's one of the few bright spots in an otherwise disappointing season for Oklahoma. Guy who's 230 and runs a 4-5-40. Yeah, you talk about Gerald Moore. He's the Big 8 player of the week. He's got to have another big game here today. We've got Gorka and Allen now in at the tailback spot. That's Allen out near the 30 and near the first down. Jeff Allen, number 25, a 6'1", 207-pound sophomore. If you take a look at his wrist, you'll see that it is heavily taped. He's got a soft cast under there because he's got a crack in the bone. But he's playing with it anyway. Frazier's already out. Allen has the broken wrist, so Gerald Moore, you would suspect, would get most of the uh, the attention today, the, the carries. And the Sooners get the first down. Our head referee, Terry Turlington, making the call. Let's go downstairs to Dean Blevins. Dean? Guys, we mentioned off the top that the field is very slick this afternoon, and Watson Brown, the offensive coordinator, told me that the Sooners have to run right at Nebraska. It's a defense that really has tremendous speed, and it's one, though, that might be vulnerable to, to the assault game right at them like Oklahoma's doing right now. But because they're so aggressive, Dean, watch the cutbacks and the isolations. Nothing doing on that play. Gerald Moore is sacked back to the 20-yard line on the toss. I'm not sure that was such a great decision. Although that play seemed to break down from the get-go. Dante Boy. Jones making the tackle. Dante Jones is an outstanding player. 6'2", 220-pounder. He's a senior. He's out of La Plata, Maryland, my neck of the woods. He's got great speed with that size. They say he could be a safety. They may move him to the outside when he gets to the bigs, but he's an outstanding player. This is the most speed Nebraska has ever had on defense. I think their best defense ever. Here is second down now. That's Moore. And Moore is tackled at the 23-yard line. We talked about that defense. Let's take a look at the black shirts. Terry Keneally, one of the leaders up front. He's a two-year starter. Troy Dumas is from Cheyenne, Wyoming. He's a very hard hitter. Keep an eye on him. Meanwhile, in the secondary, Baron Miles has four picks on the season. That's tied for tops in the conference. Let me just take you across that front. Harris has five sacks. Peter has six sacks. Uh... Connolly has five and a half sacks, and Jones has four sacks. You're talking about an active defensive front. And, Tim, their ends are just 220 pounds and 225, respectively, but fast. Here's the screen to Allen. Out across the 30 and brought down at the 33-yard line. And that'll be short of the first down. The Sooners will have to punt. Troy Dumas making the tackle. That's the guy I was mentioning just moments ago. The guy who's a very hard hitter. Oklahoma is not a very good first quarter team. They've only scored 22 points all season in the first period. And in comes Tim Dotry to punt. Remember now, Nebraska, one of the best in the country against the run, so they're just shutting it down pretty well. Look out for Baron Miles. He's a guy who's blocked many punts in his career. Dotry doesn't get off a good one here, and it bounces in favor of Nebraska. Nebraska again working with a shorter field at the 42-yard line when we come back. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Amstel Light, who says nothing's perfect. Chevrolet trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. And PageNet, America's number one wireless messaging company. Mark Jones, Tim Brandt, and Dean Blevins in the house with 5.04 remaining in the first quarter. Zeros on the scoreboard. Nebraska, number one against Oklahoma. Nebraska in their ace set. Two tight ends, two wideouts. And they run it on first down. 
to the 44-yard line. Downstairs to Dean, who's hooked on phonics, Dean. Hey, guys, you know when Tommy Frazier was a quarterback, nobody really even knew who the second-team guy was. Was it Brooke Berenger? Berenger? Take a look at the pronunciation guide for Nebraska, and it says Berenger, but even Nebraska coach Tom Osborne calls him Berenger, and we talked to him yesterday about, yesterday about what it really was. Well, I call him Berenger because that's what I called him the first time I met him. And uh, But I guess his family calls it Beringer. And uh, so I, I'll try to get that adjusted after season, though. I can't, I can't switch him over here. <laughs> hey, Tim, he's the coach. He can call him what he wants, I guess, huh? Hey, yeah, not only that, he's still calling it the middle of the year. Can't switch in the middle of the year. He's got a lot to do yet. He's got to win this game in the Orange Bowl. Uh, you can call him anything you want, but call Beringer a winner. He is 6-0 and as a starter for Nebraska after taking over. Yeah, when Tommy Frazier went down, I said, who is the backup guy, Brooke Beringer? Then behind him, you got a couple of walk-ons. you got a manager. you got Matt Turman. you got Monte Cristo. They call him the count, the count of Monte Cristo, and Chester Johnson from Bellevue, Nebraska. But he, Tommy Frazier's back now. If you missed that announcement, he can play. He's suited. He's on the sidelines. He was cleared by the doctors on Wednesday night. It is third down and one for Nebraska. They've got that huge offensive line and they decide to run it. Here's Benning down to the 46 yard line and he's got the first down. Damon Benning out of Omaha, Nebraska with the first down for the Huskers. Well, tonight on ABC all new episodes of TGIF Favorites. Family Matters, Boy Meets World, Step by Step and Hanging with Mr. Cooper followed by a brand new 2020. A perfect way to keep the holiday fun going tonight on ABC. Talked about that big offensive line. Zach Wiegert, number 72, is a guy who consumes 6,500 calories per day. There's a lot of red beans and rice. Weighs 300 pounds. Here's the waggle. Beringer incomplete at the 32. Talked about the winds of change gusting through the Big 8 conference this week, Tim. Yeah, a lot absolutely. Of you look at this game and you see, well, it's foggy, it's cloudy, full house here at uh, Owen Field. It's just like the old Nebraska-Oklahoma games, but you look at what happened this week. you got Gary Gibbs, Pat Jones, Bill McCartney all resigning. Dan McCartney is hired at Iowa State. Uh, Salam is just tearing things up, and Tommy Frazier is denied that extra year of eligibility, so he's dressed today. I mean, it's just been probably the craziest week before a big game that I can ever remember in college football. Benning on the option. Benning with a nice move down to the 42-yard line. Benning's a guy who usually doesn't see action until later in the game for Phillips. Both he and Clinton Childs usually rotate, but here he is in the first quarter with 2.45 remaining. The tackle made by Campbell and Henderson on that play. A lot of people wonder if this secondary is overrated for Oklahoma. Gary Gibbs said it was better than the units he led in 85, 86, and 87 when he was the defensive coordinator, but they don't have the Dante Jones and Brian Bosworth applying pressure up front. Tim, it is third down and six as we approach two minutes to play in the first quarter. Four receivers in the game. Out of the backfield, that's Phillips. LP down to the 34-yard line and a first down for Nebraska. The tackle made by Cedric Jones. Here's a look at Tommy Frazier. They said if it was up to Tommy, obviously, he'd be in the ball game. But that's a tough call for Coach Osborne. I mean... He's got a guy, Baring, who's 6-0 as the starter comes in, picks up the slack. You don't want to get Tommy injured. He's been on the blood thinners for so long, although he did practice this week. The doctors did clear him. His blood's okay and everything's fine. It has the makings of a Hollywood storybook ending, doesn't it? Let me tell you, if something happens where Oklahoma's threatening to upset, you're going to see Tommy Frazier. Baringer hands it off to Phillips, who's brought down at the 32-yard line, tackled again. Made by Cedric Jones, the all-conference performer for Oklahoma. You just can't give Nebraska this many opportunities on your side of the field. They've had great field position, and when you shorten the field with a team like Nebraska, for them, it's like running downhill. They're hard to stop. I mean, they threw the interception, they had the short punt, they got a bad roll on that, and Nebraska's had great field position. You know eventually they're going to kick this thing open and score. The second down and 10, with 123 to play in the first quarter. Beringer checking off of the line of scrimmage, and now he steps back and calls time. Yeah, he was going to get a delay of uh, game penalty. Good timeout by Beringer. 
So they'll think it over, and so will we. Stay with us. Tomorrow, ABC College football kicks off at 12 noon Eastern. And it, as number four, Florida, takes on their cross-state rival, number seven, Florida State. Then at 3.30 Eastern, Fred Couples, Payne Stewart, Paul Azinger, and Tom Watson play the Skins game. And live at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, the Fighting Irish take on USC. All here on ABC Sports tomorrow. USC looking to break a long losing streak against Notre Dame. Back here in Norman, Oklahoma, it's second down and 10. Zeroes on the scoreboard with 1.14 to play in the opening frame. Three wideouts for Behringer. He goes to Abdul Muhammad complete. Muhammad brought down at the 22-yard line and near the first down marker. A pickup of 11 yards, and he does have the first down. Tyrell Peters there to make the stop again, but this is a good mix by Nebraska. 15 runs now, six passes. They've already run for 55 yards, and Behringer is throwing the ball to keep him off balance. This is nicely done. Just send Muhammad down a little hook, and here comes Peters, 45. Boom, he's all over the field. Abdul Muhammad had a nice game two weeks ago against Iowa State. Made two receptions for 52 yards and with diving, laid out touchdown reception. Nebraska getting down in its area now where they're just unstoppable. They have a high percentage of scoring in the red zone. Beringer on the end around. Muhammad brought down to the 29-yard line. Brent DeQuasi with a huge play, staying home and waiting for the reverse. He was in what they call a nine technique, outside. Here's, here's DeQuasi right here. He wants to come, stay, and look for anything coming back. That's his job. Now roll it and watch him go. Inside out, inside out. Here it comes, break down, boom. That play is perfect, and you take him out of the red zone. That's out of the eye. Phillips down to the 26-yard line. And that will be the last play of the first quarter. The Oklahoma Sooners are two touchdown underdogs. The Sooners only had the ball for 3.33 in that period, but they don't trail. We'll be right back. We have third down and 15 for Nebraska. And you're looking at Mike Gundy. Kale Gundy, pardon me. Mike's brother, yep. Kale. One half of the Gundy brothers. Huge play here for the Sooners. Nose of the ball in the 27. Abdul Muhammad is in the near slot. He's their third down receiver usually. Beringer. Brought down at the 29. Good coverage in the secondary, and DeQuazy was there to make the tackle, along with Peters. So in comes the field goal unit again for Nebraska. Question is, will they kick it this time? to attempt a field goal from 46 yards out is Darren Erston. Got the wind in his back now, Mark. They faked it last time. They'll kick it this time. And he drilled it right down Main Street. He improves to 3 of 8 now on the season. And not just the first points of the ball game. The Huskers lead the Sooners when we come back. When you talk about the real professionals and gentlemen and teachers and educators and coaches of college football, that man right there, Tom Osborne, is second to none. Dr. Tom has had five 11-win seasons at Nebraska. That's phenomenal. 22 years. 50% of Erstead's kickoffs go for touchbacks like that. Good way to get favorable field position and control it. Look at the first quarter stats, Tim. You want to know the story? It's right here. One turnover, 
And Nebraska only had it 3.33. I mean, Oklahoma only had it three and a half minutes in the entire first quarter. So they, they had the turnover, shortened the field. Nebraska played in Oklahoma territory that first quarter the entire time. And Oklahoma never had the football. But when that happens, you lose. And they trail 3-0. And that Oklahoma defense, if this keeps up, is bound to get a little fatigued. McGee to pass. And now he's scrambling. He's got real estate. McGee with a pickup of 25 yards out to the 45-yard line. Finally chased out by Troy Dumas downfield. First big play of the game for the Sooner offense. You know, McGee, All-American at Northeast Oklahoma A&M, they talked about his escape ability when he first came to the school. But I'm telling you, he's given Troy Dumas number four a heck of a race for that sideline. Now, McGee is 6'4", 190 pounds. Dumas, 6'4", 220. So you got two great big guys here that move in sections. That's a nice cutback and a big game by McGee. McGee came out on the record and said he wants to win this one, and it is his job to keep the team focused through all the coaching controversy that has led last. Hey, between Dumas and McGee, that was a heck of a race. Gerald Moore out to the 47-yard line. Moore with about two yards that time. He's the team's leading rusher coming into this game with 588 yards. Tackled again by Dumas. We mentioned Oklahoma not being a very good first quarter team. Well, they're not that good a second quarter team either sometimes. You know, we talked about Troy Dumas, number four, a couple times in the last two plays. He broke a guy's helmet once when he was playing Wyoming. The quarterback came in, hit him so hard, the guy's helmet split. It's a good thing the quarterback said wasn't in it either. He come off with it anyway. Pass complete to number six, Michael McDaniel, the big tight end. And it's close to the first down at the 45-yard line. Might be a yard or so short. Might be a yard short, but that's definitely the record. 145 completions. That breaks the record, and I'll tell you something. That is phenomenal. He comes in this year out of... Northeast Oklahoma A&M Junior College comes in here and just takes over, and I mean, he has been sensational throwing the ball. Inconsistent at times, but he can throw a hard pass. Started off at Arizona State. Originally wanted to go to Oklahoma, but they didn't recruit him. Third down and one. Chandler with the first down for the Sooners. And a big conversion right there. And that gives the fans here in Crimson and Cream something finally to cheer about. You know, you think about McGee breaking that record. You think about McGee throwing a lot of passes. Unusual for Oklahoma. I mean, they've thrown 280 passes this year. You remember the Sooners got into the wishbone formation the fourth game of 1970. Didn't get out of it until the 1980s with Marcus Dupree as an eye back. That was Barry Switzer. Now you've got uh, Gibbs, and he's throwing the ball more. And this time they hand it off. James Allen with a gaping hole. He's down to the 27-yard line, but there's a flag down at the 45 on the far side of the field. Eric Stokes made the tackle for Nebraska. And it's offsides against the Oklahoma Sooners, so it'll come back. Terry Turlington, the man wearing the white cap. Talking about how the offense has changed. Look at the passing Hillary percentage. Wilson on the offense. Five 36 yards. 36% this first year. Down. That's up from 13% 89. It's gone up almost every year. 92, they had 39%. Shows you how the game has changed. The ironic thing there is, Tim, is that Oklahoma won so many titles using that wishbone. Now, and there's Watson Brown does a great job with that offense. I suspect will be a candidate for the job here. Now that Gary Gibbs has stepped down be a good head coach. They want to find a new head coach by December the 15th. Inside handoff to Gerald Moore. Juking down to the 39-yard line. Brought down by Dumas, who makes yet another tackle. Gerald Moore missed two and a half games. And that took a big chunk of the Oklahoma offensive options away. Watch the hold up top. Boom. Wrap him up right here. <laughs> That's the way you get a good block. You just take him, you ride him out of there. That's McDaniel, number six. You don't get a flag, it's a great block. <laughs> Second down and seven, the ball to 39. 
P.J. Mills split wide to the bottom of your screen. A counter play to Moore. He can break tackles. Thunder lands at the 16. Tackled by Jones, but a first down after a pickup of 23. Switch from tailback to fullback, he was the hammer guy, 230 pounds. And then because they needed him, he started running 151 yards last week and five touchdowns. Now he's got five carries, 41 yards. Boy, he's a load, 230 pounds. Gerald Moore doing a great job so far in this game. 10.50 remaining in the second quarter. Motion on the right side of the offensive line for Oklahoma. And Lennon littering the field. You know, coming into the game, I think all the coaches... At Oklahoma figured, hey, we can't have turnovers. They've had one. We can't have penalties. They had one earlier that just brought back a big play. Watson Brown's beside himself looking at this flag Dead against Oklahoma. Foul. This is the Ball second start one. On the offense. First down. You know, I can remember Watson Brown, that man there, after the OU Texas game that we did down in Dallas. He was so distraught. And that picture really epitomized the year for Oklahoma. Look at inside the 20. Do you realize teams have only gotten inside the 20 16 times all year on Nebraska? That's just getting inside the 20. Then scoring's another thing. Watson Brown, an offensive innovator. Chandler and Allen in the backfield. And the ball barely moves across the 19-yard line. Chandler. I'm Mark Jones, along with Tim Brandt and Dean Blevins. Nebraska, ranked number one in the country, leads three to nothing against Oklahoma. The Huskers with a trip to the Orange Bowl on the line. And Nebraska defensively ranks among the nation's best in all four defensive categories. Run defense, pass defense, total defense, and scoring. I mean, these guys give up less than 13 points a game. Second down and 12. Albert Hall. And P.J. Mills split wide to the bottom of your screen. The counter, and Allen falls at the 19-yard line. So it'll set up third down and long. Troy Dumas right there to pounce on him afterwards. You know, you're seeing more and more runners do that. They approach the line. If they see the hole closing up, then they're going to try to put on the brakes and dance outside. They see guys like Emmett Smith do it. They see guys like Barry Sanders do it. Those guys are only 5'8", 5 5'9", 5 5'10". 5 they're quicker than gossip. I mean, these college kids aren't that quick and aren't that decisive. And a lot of times, they just lose their feet and lose yardage. Third down and 13. Boy, could the Sooners use a conversion here. The play action by McGee, the screen pass. McDaniel escapes one tackler and is pushed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. McDaniel a nice move to get away. Got a great block from Albert Hall, number one. He was about to get tackled, and Albert Hall just took on the tackler and knocked him off. This play's well set up. He waits just about as long as he can. Watch the pressure. It's all over. Now stop it right here. Here comes Albert Hall, number one, and actually pushes this tackler off of him. Go ahead and roll it. Look at that. And he gets another five, six, seven yards. From 33 yards out. Blanton has it blocked. A big play by the Husker special teams. Baron Miles was there, and Watson Brown can't believe it. It's been that type of year for the Oklahoma Sooners. We'll be right back. Nebraska still leads by three, and we'll show you why. Aaron Miles has three blocks this year. This will be his fourth. Coming off the bottom of your screen, number 14. Watch. Takes a great pursuit angle, lays out right in front of it, and gets his right hand on it. Had he gone for the kickers, he never would have gotten it. But watch how he takes an angle to get a couple yards in front and tips it with his right hand. And it's just short. They still lead 3-0. Hey, That's, That's his seventh of his shot. career. Sundown, fourth right? this go. year. And Oklahoma's had three blocked punts and now a blocked field goal attempt. I've seen Baron Miles take a ball off the punter's foot for a touchdown in the end zone. That's how good he is at blocking kicks and punts. <laughs> Phillips stopped up in the backfield by Tyrell Peters for a loss of about two. Monday night, ABC Sports visits the Superdome in Louisiana. And Steve Young and the San Francisco 49ers take on the New Orleans Saints 
in an NFC Western Division battle. That's Monday 9, 6 Pacific, Monday Night Football. Eight and a half minutes to play in the first half. It's a very close three to nothing game. Phillips now just eight carries, 21 yards. But what a game Tyrell Peters is having. He's the defensive MVP so far, making all the tackles. Four wideouts for this play. Bangeringer on the waggle. Brought down at the seven. Tremendous pursuit. The third sack of the afternoon. That one by Wendell Davis. Three sacks this year for the Oklahoma defense. Barringer allows this to happen by outrunning his blockers and then trying to cut back. He doesn't have the speed to beat Wendell Davis, the safety. Downstairs to Dean Blevins. Dean, what do you got? Well, guys, I think it's an example of Oklahoma playing loose today. They're, they had 10 men within three yards of the line of scrimmage on that play. And, Timmy, as you mentioned earlier, don't be surprised. Tommy Frazier later. It is third down and Tulsa to go. 23 yards. I like that's a delay of game, isn't it? Boy, the Cornhuskers are going the wrong way. Well, the thing is, they walked out of the huddle. They stood around. Barringer's looking like he was confused. The play clock had ended. And when they threw the flag, Barringer said, hey, what's up with that? <laughs> that's a delay. Moves him inside of five. You know... Oklahoma's flying around defensively and playing well, very loose, as, as Dean said. He's out here practice yesterday. Actually, I was with Gary Gibbs all the practice. I think it's the first practice Gary ever missed. I kept him in his office. But they came out of practice with short, and they were all horsing around having fun. Meanwhile, Turner Gill, quarterback coach, and Tommy Frazier watching from the Nebraska sidelines. Barringer up top for Reggie Ball, incomplete at midfield. And Nebraska will have to punt within the shadows of their own goalposts. Larry Bush in on the coverage and a dejected looking Barringer. I'll tell you this, Nebraska's letting them hang around, hang around, and as long as they do, these Oklahoma fans are going to get into the ball game. They're going to get behind this team, and some strange things could happen. Gary Gibbs coaching in his last Oklahoma-Nebraska showdown. He's a former player. And he knows what it's like to be on the field in this situation. Erstad with the punt out of his end zone. Johnson at the 45. Darius Johnson with a nice return down to the 32, but there's a flag down at the 40. Couple of flags, two or three flags down. Some illegal block in the back on one, I believe, against Oklahoma. So what looks like great field position, they'll have to move that back, and that'll be from the spot of the foul. Here's the call from our official. That's exactly what it is, and that'll be from the spot of the foul. So instead of being down near the 30 of Nebraska, they're going to be back by midfield. Push in the back on the receiving team. 10-yard penalty. Spot of the foul. First down, Oklahoma. Turnovers and penalties. We talked about it at the top. But watch the bottom of your screen. You can take your pick. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one over here. And instead of being at the 31 now, the ball's going to be up by midfield. The Sooners, not a great special teams team. Either on kickoffs or punt returns. 6.50 remaining in the first half. McGee's going to pass. Throws it high at the 33, intended for Albert Hull. He had him open, too. Well, next Saturday, a big one, folks. A trip to the Sugar Bowl on the line as number three, Alabama, collides with number four, Florida, in the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. Live from the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Next Saturday here on ABC's College Football. We'll move that game to Atlanta. Second down and ten to go. Oklahoma has yet to get on the scoreboard. They run it this time up the middle. Gerald Moore gets about three yards down to the 48-yard line where he's tackled by Dwayne Harris, number 86. I think Moore surprises people with his power. We mentioned he's 5'10", 230 pounds. At that time, Dwayne Harris grabbed him in the backfield, and Moore just dragged Harris, the tackler, for about another three yards. Instead of a loss, they picked positive yard up, yardage up. 
Gerald Moore, just a sophomore. How impressive is that? Over seven yards a carry. You know, Tim, he's a sophomore. James Allen is a sophomore. Jeff Frazier, who's out for this game, is also a sophomore. There are a lot of talented players still on this Oklahoma roster for the next coach that comes in. Third down and eight. And the Sooners will take a timeout. We're going to take a break. Come right back. Stay with us. Well, it was 0-0 after the first quarter of play, and then in the second quarter, Darren Erstad notched a 46-yard field goal to give Nebraska a 3-0 lead. That's where we stand right now. Time of possession, a big story in that first quarter, Tim, and so far. Most impressive thing to me is the way Oklahoma's defense is flying around. Nebraska averages 359 yards rushing a game. Today, they have 36 total yards rushing. That's it. We Oklahoma's playing with a lot of emotion. Yeah, we shouldn't be surprised if this is a close game because last year it was 7-7 seven seven going into the fourth quarter. Right now it is third down and long for Oklahoma. Out of the shotgun, McGee. Had a receiver hole on the near side of the field, but misfired. And the Sooners will have to punt. That's twice that McGee has missed open receivers. Well, and more importantly, Oklahoma squanders a great opportunity here. They had good field position even after the penalty. They still were in Nebraska territory, just inside the 50. They squander that opportunity and give it right back. Into punt is Tim Daughtry, who took over the punting duties in the OU Texas game. Did a pretty good job in that matchup. And Green Moss and Reggie Ball are standing back on Nebraska's 10 yard line. He ought to aim away from the receivers. He hangs it up high. And they call for the fair catch at the 16. Pretty good job by Daughtry. It's down inside the 20 at the 14 yard line. A 34 yard punt. Downstairs to D. Guys, I'm joined by Mike Minner, injured free safety for Nebraska, out for the year because of a knee injury. And, Mike, one reason you really wanted to play in this one is you're from Lawton, Oklahoma, playing for the Huskers. Oh, yeah. Um, all year and all, you know, I've been circling this date to come back here and play against Oklahoma. You know, it's been my first time down here. And, um, you know, I really look forward to it. But, unfortunately, I got hurt, so um, I just got to work at it. All right, good luck with the comeback. Thanks. Back to you guys. A real testament to Nebraska's depth. They played well without him this year. Schuster running the ball. Talked about that huge offensive line. Yeah, but look at this. Mark, in the first 11 games, they allowed just four sacks. Today, already in the first half, they've allowed three. And they've been called for holding just four times all year. Tim, uh, I've held my mother-in-law more times than you how my, my mother-in-law's to be. <laughs> Now, this is the best offensive line I've seen all year. We've seen some good ones. 5-18 remaining in the first half. Nebraska leads 3-0. Out of the option, the pitch to Bennett. Ridden out of bounds at the 18 by Larry Bush that time. They strung it out nicely. When a club runs that option, whether it's a triple option, freeze option, or the load option, it's assignment defense. Somebody has to take the pitch man, somebody has to take the quarterback, and somebody has to take the dive man. Bush had the pitch man, he got right to him. And I mean, they pulled big old number 66 day and got him out there. But his third down and six. Look at Brendan Stein. Huge, 300 pounds. Third down and six, twins left. Beringer incomplete at the 22. Intended for Muhammad. And the Oklahoma defense comes up with yet another stop. And the fans voice their collective approval. Look at this. It looks like man coverage right away locked on. Muhammad pulls up and has the outside step. Good separation there. Away from Bush. And it was just overthrown poorly executed pass. Neither quarterback has looked very sharp so far. McGee misfiring and bearing her a couple times too. Erstad with the punt, a line drive back to the 43. That's Johnson. That should be a late hit. It sure is. And here comes the late flag. It'll be a personal foul, late hit against Nebraska. And Oklahoma's going to have terrific field position once again. A 40-yard punt and four yards on the return that time. And we will wait for the call from the officials. Should be a personal foul. It 
It's against the Huskers. Personal foul. Now there's no fair catch. Here comes the coverage. He's down, and here comes the late hit. That's a good call. Dead ball. Personal foul on Nebraska. First down. That really punctuates the intensity of this ball game. So much emotion, but sometimes that emotion can get you in trouble like it did there. Under five minutes to play in the first half. The handoff. Down to the 39 to Gerald Moore. Coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, John Saunders with scores and highlights from all of today's action. Plus a live interview with Florida head coach Steve Spurrier and Florida State's head coach Bobby Bowden about tomorrow's showdown between the two schools. And John will run down the bowl picture for you. Time ticking away here on the central Oklahoma plain of Norman. This is an opportunity the Sooners have to take advantage of. James Allen slips again. That's the second time we've seen him fall today. It's unusual. I was down on that turf yesterday at practice. It's, a, it's an outstanding field. And although some of the grass obviously is dying this time of the year, I mean, the turf itself is tight. There's nothing really there that's, that's wet or slippery. So Lightning having a problem getting his footing. And look at the disparity in yards this quarter. Yeah, see, I don't think there's any question that Oklahoma right now playing a little bit over its head. Defensively flying around, offensively. Jared Moore's outstanding. Time for conversion on third down right here. Garrick with time, complete to Albert Hall, a first down at the 14-yard line. He beat Tyrone Williams on the play, and it's a first down Sooners. Look at Albert Hall, he bounces up, starts telling the fans, here we go, first down. I think a key here is the fact that Stamps and McClure and Langston and Cavalry Conrad have given plenty of time, then he steps up. Look at the separation that Hall gets to the outside. They thought he was coming back in. It's a pickup of 25. Williams had to make up time, number eight, just to make the tackle and knock him out of bounds. Before the game, Albert Hall was rewarded and honored as one of the outstanding players on the team. That's Gerald Moore down to the 13-yard line, tackled by Dante Jones. I will tell you this, Oklahoma scored 63 points in the last two games. I mean, they've really been kicking in offensively. Under three and a half minutes to play in the first half. They trail by three. Dean, what's up? Well, guys, just a little food for thought here. I think with the uh, Oklahoma kicker, Blanton, having a pulled hamstring and with the uh, kicking woes, the block kicks, I think this is four-down territory. What do you think, guys? Oh, I definitely agree with you. Right here at second down, Moore. Boy, do you see what kind of leg strength he has? He picked up about three yards after the initial hit. Kareem Moss finally brought him down. You know, because he's almost, he's just under 5'10", because he's very short, he's a hide-and-seek type runner. It's a big offensive line, 6'3", 295 pounds. He kind of waits for his blockers in front of him and gets, he hides behind him, and it explodes once he sees a crease. Seeks that opening, hide-and-seek. Third down and four. Now look at Moore. He's been the leather lugger so far. The people really can't get a good shot at him because he's not that tall. Five different times Oklahoma has spoiled and knocked Nebraska off its lofty number one perch. We'll be right back. Under two and a half minutes remaining in this first half. Nebraska leading by a field goal. Folks, they recruit them young here in Norman, Oklahoma. Actually, that's the Nebraska section. That guy's got strings. That baby's got strings all the way up to its coat. He's trying to bite that string off, get that mitten off. Third down and four to go for Oklahoma. McGee looking to pass in the end zone incomplete. He tried to hit Michael McDaniel, but he overthrew him. And interestingly enough, in comes Scott Blanton now, the field goal kicker. That's all right. That's Scott Blanton is, is fairly accurate from this range. Looked like McGee knew he was going to get hit, knew the ball was behind him. It wasn't well thrown. He just gave up on it, but it was not a well thrown pass. Now Blanton comes on. He's solid from this range. All he needs is some protection. Remember last time, 
Miles came off the corner to block the last one. He's a perfect two for two from this distance. Make that three for three. He nails the 25-yarder, and Oklahoma, in Gary Gibbs' last regular season home game, has tied the score 3-3 against the Cornhuskers. See, we talked about the four-down area, but it was too far to go. The obvious choice is the field goal. If you give him some protection, he'll bang it through, and he does, and we're tied. He splits the sticks with 2.19 to go in the half. Blanton now 11 of 16 on this season, and Gary Gibbs, the beleaguered coach, showing his approval. It was interesting in speaking with Tom Osborne across the field from Gary Gibbs today, the amount of empathy that you could sense from the Nebraska head coach for the situation that Gary Gibbs is going through. And something that people don't think about, Tim, is the number of people that are affected when one head coach resigns. Well, and Dr. Tom says, here's a guy that's won twice as many games as he's lost. Here's a guy that took a program that was completely disheveled and put it back together. Here's a guy that recruited quality kids and brought them in here, and now they're running him out of town because he can't win the big games against Nebraska and Texas. Gary Gibbs has been a member of the Oklahoma football family for 25 years. Talking to Gary yesterday, he said it got personal, started to affect his family, and that was really the decision maker for him. He didn't care. He could take the shots, but when they started putting signs and things like that on his front lawn where his, his kids could see him, he said it was, it, this is going too far. Sometimes as a society, we lose perspective. Blanton with the kickoff. Comes down to the goal line. That's Benning. Damon Benning with a 26-yard return out to the 26-yard line. Let's see if this uh, Oklahoma defense can keep up the wild approach they've had here in the first half, flying around to the football. I mean, Nebraska averages over six yards every time it runs the ball. But today, it's just a yard. This Oklahoma defense, Tim, ranks number three in the Big Eight against the run. Guys are selling out. The guys in the red jerseys are right now out playing the guys in the white. Double tight end set. Twins left. Bearing it a pass. It was thrown low, and it's ruled incomplete at the 38-yard line intended for Eric Alford. Tim, we talked about Tommy Frazier on the sidelines. Brooke Behringer is the starting quarterback today. Do you think that at some point Behringer starts to look over his shoulder yeah, a little bit? I really do. This is something we talked about before the game. I think Brooke is a very confident guy. He knows he's done the job, and he knows he's 6-0 as a starter, but he's got to be thinking, hey, Tommy's back there. He was a Heisman Trophy candidate. Everybody loves him. I know he's effective. They may put him in a final performance. He is just 3 of 9, make that 4 for 10 now, complete to Alford. But Alford is swarmed at a 27-yard line, finding little or no room. A tackle made by Lucky. The thing I love here defensively is they say 90% of defense is wanting to play, is being aggressive, having that mean attitude. They are flying around. You've got four or five guys around the ball every time the white jersey's touching. And Darius Johnson was shaken up on the play. He's Oklahoma's best quarterback. Came into the game with four picks and has been the most consistent performer in the secondary all year. A lot of people hate to hear this, but you have to be playing football with bad intentions when you're playing defense. It is third down and eight, Tim. Ten seconds to go on the play clock. They may get caught again out of the shotgun. It's happened once before. He's got to take a timeout. The play clock's down to one. Did he call a timeout? Yes, he did. You know, I saw that happen. They started late, and they're forced to burn a timeout. Dr. Osborne does not like that. It is third down and eight to go for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Herringer just four of ten on the afternoon. Throws it up top for Muhammad and it's incomplete. Batted down nicely by the free safety Anthony Fogel. He says, not today, not now, not ever. And Behringer now 4 of 11. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be making all those signals playing against Nebraska because they may come back and fight you. But he played very, very well here. He had to come over and help Bush. They had double coverage on the outside. He read it all the way. Almost had the pick and just knocked it down, forcing Nebraska to punt. Erstad standing on his own 13-yard line. 
that deep back into the game. Darius Johnson was wow. shaking up. What a rocket! Wow, what a punt! Can they get to it? No, they don't. But man, did that thing take off! That ball had helium in it. <laughs> Check it. A 73 yard boot by Erstead. That ball was juiced. Man, anything in the air that long should have had a flight attendant on it. Watch this. <laughs> this is amazing. He's had 19 putts inside the 20 this year. He's got a 42-yard average. And I mean this. This was a bazooka shot. You could see Darius Johnson standing on his own 20-yard line. He said, I don't think I'm going to get this one. That's a Nebraska record 87-yard that's unbelievable. Erstad, who's also a big eight outfielder, he was a member of the Cape Cod League, played baseball, very good baseball player. All right, that one was 73 yards. The record is 87, but I'll take it. That was a huge punt. He came into the game averaging 42.1 per punt. Erstad was the MVP of the Cape Cod Baseball League. He could be playing as a pro someday soon. 113 to play in the first half. Moore stopped at the nine-yard line by Jones. Jones, one of the strongest players on that Nebraska defense. He was voted weightlifter of the year. And right at that time, he bench-pressed the Oklahoma runner. We'll be back. 73-yard punt and an illegal block, and the ball's at the 10-yard line. Here's Gerald Moore on the toss sweep out to the 17-yard line. He's short of the first down. It'll be third down with about two or three to go. The tackle made by Ellis, the middle linebacker, and strong safety, Tony Velen. Gives them a little bit of room, though. They were backed up in there against this defense. Both teams now out of timeouts. No timeouts remaining for either team. We're going to take a timeout and be right back. Stay with us. Derek McGee, the junior quarterback for the Sooners, talking it over with the Brain Trust on the sidelines with 54 seconds remaining in the first half. We are tied at three. Situation's this. Neither team has a timeout left. This is a, an Oklahoma team that has turned the ball over time and again all year. They already have one in this game. You want to play and just throw tendencies away, but you don't want to turn the ball over, so you got to be careful here. They run it to Gerald Moore, who does not get the first down. No, see? He's that tackled at the 19-yard line by Winstrom. Yeah, see, they're very conscious of turning the ball over. Now, with 47 seconds left, clock continues to run now. It's down inside 40. I would think you'd have to punt it out of there, but they're, uh, they're just letting that clock run. Should be about a 12-second differential. 28 on the clock, 15 on the play clock. Story of this first half so far has been the Oklahoma defensive crew. And Gary Gibbs is a former defensive coordinator for the Sooners. So his team, traditionally, strong defensively. Let it run down, take the penalty. Punt team comes on, gives them only 12 seconds to work. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, the Prudential Halftime Report. Scores and highlights from John Saunders. And a halftime interview with Florida State's Bobby Bowden. As well as Terry Bowden, who has now joined his father. And Steve Spurrier, the head coach of Florida. Here's Dotry to punt from his own end zone. If you get it out and you cover, it's a smart play. You didn't want to take a chance by making a pass and make, forcing a turnover, but you have to cover this punt. Here's Moss. Coming back the other way, and he's brought down to the 46-yard line with no time remaining in the first half. It ends three apiece. People were wondering if the Sooners would quit on Gary Gibbs. I think we have our answer. It's a resounding no. They have played well here in the first 30 minutes. We are tied at three apiece. Don't forget, coming up, the Prudential Halftime Report with scores and highlights from across the country. John Saunders is coming up next. 
On a cold Friday afternoon in Norman, Oklahoma, the Sooners and the Cornhuskers tied at three apiece. And here's how we got there. Darren Erstad booted a 46-yarder in the second quarter to, to put Nebraska up three to nothing. And then it was countered by a Scott Blanton 25-yard field goal to tie the score at three apiece. And not too long ago, our Dean Blevins asked the $64,000 question to Tom Osborne. Coach, offensively, the question has to be, you, st you sputtered a little bit. Will Tommy Frazier play in the second half? I really don't know yet, Dean. We'll just play it by ear and see what we have to do. But we, we need to play a little bit better, need to move the ball, need to get our running game going, and Oklahoma's playing great defense. It'll be a tough game. All right, good luck. Thank you. And there's a look at Tommy Frazier on the sidelines. Wonder what's going through his mind right now. Guarantee you he's going to be in this ball game unless Beringer keeps Beringer gets fire. He struggled a little bit. Beringer was four for 11, 23 yards in that first half. Phillips had eight carries and 21 yards, and he was being tagged. Oklahoma doing an outstanding job defensively, and I would be shocked if Beringer struggles a little bit that we don't see Tommy Frazier. Nebraska will kick off to start the second half. Darren Erstead from his 35-yard line. Darius Johnson is back deep. This is P.J. Mills who accompanies him. Mills brought down right away at the 21-yard line. Garrick McGee threw one interception in the first half. And he has the leadership qualities that can move this team, but he hasn't done it yet. We're going to go downstairs now to Dean Blevins. Dean? Guys in the Oklahoma locker room, Gary Gibbs told his club that he felt Oklahoma outplayed Nebraska in the first half. The Nebraska team knew that. He said defensively, expect Nebraska to come out and just pound the ball at them. Offensively, be more disciplined, more patient, and play field position. Right now, the ball is on the 21, which is where they start. They hand it off on first down. James Allen out to the 22-yard line. Tim looking back at some of the keys to this game. We said when the game started, Oklahoma had to break tendencies, play wild, aggressive football. And look, they had three sacks by mixing things up and doing a few different things, putting in some brand-new packages for Nebraska. A couple of other things they had to do. Limit turnovers and penalties. Well, they did turn it over once early on an interception. They had five penalties for 35 yards. So to win here this afternoon, Oklahoma has to improve that side of it. The Sooners looking for that big play. This, the last regular season home game for Kerry Gibbs. McGee on the slant, complete the haul. Hall with a first down out to the 45-yard line. A 23-yard pickup by the senior. Tough pass to stop when it's thrown properly. He had the inside leverage on Miles, the left cornerback. It looked like Ellis, the linebacker, was actually blitzing. McGee had to unload it quickly. Look at the leverage he's got inside. McGee puts it over the linebacker, under the cornerback, well thrown to Hall. But watch Hall drive him off, give him a move to the outside, and then separates from him. The ball's thrown high enough. Miles had no shot. Nice play. McGee on the toss to James Allen, trying to get to the corner and square those shoulders. He turns up field and rams his way down to the 45-yard line where he's tackled by Troy Dumas. A nice game, though. Take a look at the halftime statistics, and you'll look down at Nebraska, and you won't believe this, folks. 63 total yards. Look at that. Tremendous job by Oklahoma. There's the turnover we talked about. That's the one. Time of possession. Oklahoma only had it three and a half minutes in the first half. You can see what they did. I mean, in the first quarter, you can see what they did in the second quarter. They really got some offense going and gave the defense a break. They give it to Gerald Moore, who pounds his way down to the 42-yard line, picking up the first down. A pretty good start, an auspicious beginning to the second half for Oklahoma, and you can hear the response. You know, a lot of people in this town did not want Gary Gibbs to coach this team anymore. They made their intentions known to get him out of town. I'll tell you what, everybody now is behind the players because the coaches aren't playing this game right now. It's between the lines, and I think the fans are sold on the fact that these players want to win. Allen with the handoff, driving his way down to the 41-yard line, tackled by Christian Peter. Look at the first half possessions of uh, Oklahoma. Had an interception. They had to punt. They missed a field goal. Actually, it was blocked. They had to punt. Field goal and a punt. The Sooners with a slow first half. Just three points. 
course, OU squandered some opportunities. They were in Nebraska territory a couple of times and couldn't capitalize. Second down and eight. A toss sweep to Allen. Allen down at the 41-yard line. You know, I'd be interested to see if he changed his footing at halftime. He, he's had trouble cutting and stopping on the dime so far this afternoon. Yeah, it's a big-time play by Phil Ellis that time to cut him off. Phil Ellis, the middle linebacker. That's Darius Johnson, the starting cornerback, being worked on on the sidelines. Johnson with some key plays in the first half. Third down and eight for Oklahoma. Langston asking for quiet from the fans. He's going to throw, has it batted down, and incomplete, almost picked off by number nine, Beelan. So the black shirt defense gives up a first down and then puts a halt to the Oklahoma offense. Tremendous punt. pressure, Mark. Tremendous pressure by Nebraska that time. McGee never had a shot to get it off. Watch this. Look at 41 Ellis in the middle, and then you watch the two guys on each side of them, the down lineman. Now watch their push, and now here comes Ellis late. The pressure was quick. They batted the ball, and it was almost picked off. Into punt is Daughtry. Daughtry laid one inside the 20 in the first half. See what he does here. A high kick angling through the sidelines. It takes a poor bounce for Oklahoma out to the 15-yard line. It bounced first to the 10. That's still a great pooch punt. Goes out at the 15, and Nebraska starts back up. Take a look at the keys that we talked about early on for Nebraska. I mean, they came in as the heavy favorite, number one. Maintain consistency. No turnovers, but minus eight yards in the second quarter. Absolutely no offense able to get it going. Simply execute the offense and defense, and look at that. They've only rushed for 40 yards. Unbelievable. This coming from a team that averages 358 yards per game on the ground. Schlesinger and Phillips out of the eye. Phillips to the eye back, and he gets the handoff. Cuts it outside and is brought down at the 22-yard line, gaining about seven on first down. DeQuazy making the tackle. You know, it's interesting, sitting talking to Gary Gibbs yesterday in his office at great length. He said, you know, Tim, something we've always been able to do is play good defense against Nebraska. And if you look at this, Nebraska, 359 yards a game, today 47. He says, we've got them figured out. If we can just play, we've got the right scheme. And so far, he's right. I'd call that great defense. Just on the way, Nebraska's first possession of the second half. Barringer keeps it himself on the option and is brought down to the 22-yard line. He lost a yard on that one. Cedric Jones making the tackle, the second leading tackler on the team. You know, I don't want to take anything away from Barringer. He has done a marvelous job stepping in for a guy who was a Heisman candidate and a very talented player. But Barringer right now doesn't run the option like Fraser, obviously. They are getting the running game going. His passing has not been really on target. If he doesn't do it this series, and maybe next, I suspect we'll see Fraser. The Fraser watch is officially on. Got to get to the 25-yard line, a little bit beyond for the first down. They spread the field. Beringer keeps it and has the first down plus some. I'll do it myself, he says, and he fumbles it. Nebraska gets it back. See, as soon as we talk about him, he breaks a nice play. He's reading the defensive end. That's his read all the way. He either pitches it or he cuts it inside. Reggie cut it inside made a great cut. Reggie Ball recovered the fumble, Tim. Now watch this. Coming down the line. He reads the end. The end takes too wide of an approach angle in the pitch, man. So he just pulled it down and cut inside. And there was nobody there for containment or flood control. Of course, Emma. Dean was there. I thought Dean was going to make that tackle. <laughs> He's reading that option, too. He's seen it enough times. And we have an injured player down on the field on the far side at the 43-yard line. That's an Oklahoma player. I wonder if Dean gets a letter for that. That's the first time I've seen him in action. <laughs> let's go downstairs to the man who got that flash from, Dean. Hey, uh, let's get off those old, old option quarterbacks. Hey, I'm with some Nebraska fans here behind me. They sold 7,500 tickets up in Lincoln for this game. They traveled around 10,000 for the game. And take a look at the graphic. Oklahoma's attendance has declined in the last five years. Today's attendance, over 70,000, the largest since 92 when Oklahoma hosted USC. 
interesting, Dean, that they have only sold out Memorial Stadium once during Gary Gibbs' tenure. The toss on first down. And this Oklahoma defense is playing very well. The tackle made at midfield by Cedric Jones. Dean, back to you. The, the graphic of the declining attendance and people were questioning why the Gibbs resignation. One of the factors is the declining interest. But, of course, here today, over 70,000, 10,000 Husker fans, though. You know, I think a lot of that has to do with the students, too. So right. many of the students make up this uh, this attendance here at Owen Field. I think that has changed. Well, there's been a lot of talk, Timmy, also about increased ticket prices, but uh, bottom line is the interest is not what it once yeah. was. No, I agree with you. I mean, there's a lot of things. The ticket prices went up. The attitudes of the students have changed here. Oklahoma football is not what it used to be. Hey, the requirements to get into the school have been raised. I mean, there's a whole lot of things, I think, that, that go in to make up that attendance figure. Well, it's kind of amazing that the last sellout was against Colorado here back in 1989. It used to be packed every Saturday. Well, here's a look at the injured player and the injury down on the field. Looks like Holbein. Boy, he took a shot in the back, took one in the side, and took it in the front. He got hit it every which way. That's Brendan Holbein, a backup split end. Walking off now under his own power. It is second down and 10 to go. A shot at the national title on the line for Nebraska. Quick drop for Barringer under pressure. Completes the pass to the near side, Reggie Ball, at the 45-yard line. And he got rid of it just in time. Fantastic job by Fred Lewis to chase him down from the back. Fred Lewis is the nose tackle, the nose guard. And watch number 95 come back on the back of Barringer. There's 95, there's Barringer. Boy, he got it off just in time. Now the completion, I thought for a second it was going to be picked off. But it looked like Bush, 31, got a bad break on it. All he could do is make the tackle. It'll bring up third and long. Third down, five to go. Barringer checking off at the line. Playcock down to three. They get it off in time. The counter, Phillips. Right at the first down marker, he got it at the 39-yard line. He tiptoed his way down the sideline. Good body control to stay in bounds. Simpson finally pushed him out. Lawrence Phillips, his nickname, LP. You know what, we were talking about Oklahoma's defense. Nebraska had just 63 total yards in the first half. OU held Nebraska to 179 total yards in last year's game. They've got to come up big again because it's great field position for the first down by Nebraska here. Two tight ends, Muhammad in the slot. They go for Muhammad, he's open. And he hung on to it at the 14-yard line. He got drilled by Larry Bush. But Abdul Muhammad squeezed that leather to pick up 24 yards. Yeah, Bush right now is trying to find out if he's in Norman or Lincoln. You talk about a slobber knocker. Watch this hit. Number one, it looked like Barringer just kind of hung it up too long. Now watch out of the left hand of your screen. Bush comes. That is a great tackle. Of course, Muhammad pops right up. It's Bush that's a little bit foggy. Muhammad just 5'9", 160, part of the itty-bitty receiving committee for Nebraska. They hand it off to Schlesinger, who's brought down at the nine-yard line. Tackled by Simpson. Schlesinger, their demolition man, a great blocker in the mold of Tom Rathman, and a pretty good runner, too. You know, that was the third first down of this drive. They didn't have one first down in the second quarter. Made some adjustments in the locker room at halftime. They figured out what uh, these new packages that Oklahoma's running defensively, and they're starting to attack them. This is what a Nebraska drive typically looks like. Second down and four. They just pound at you and pound at you. You're playing defense. Look for number one, Phillips, right now. Custer Johnson in motion. This is Phillips, and he slips and falls at the eight-yard line. 
Darius Johnson, who was injured earlier, you making know, the tackle. I don't think they got this playoff in time. That's one thing. You look at Nebraska inside the 20, the success they've had. But I tell you, I think they may move out of the red zone here, or almost out of it. I don't think he got that off in time. Do you see a flag anywhere? None down on the Good field. Ball foul. Delay of the game on the offense. Repeat second down. Yeah, I, I was watching the play clock, and I know they didn't snap it in the allotted time. I still this, don't see a flag. But Tim, that's the second time today that's happened. I don't think a flag was thrown. But they march it off against the Huskers. It's happened twice to them, and on one other occasion, they were saved by a timeout. Second down and nine. Where they spread the field, four wideouts. Abdul Muhammad is in the slot to the right side of the field. This stadium's rocking. Time to bring the noise. Beringer, Muhammad complete. He's brought down at the nine-yard line by Darius Johnson. Abdul Muhammad, their clutch third and even second down receiver. Out of Compton, California. You're playing in the secondary now. This is a reverse angle. They're coming right at you. You're in a zone defense. He just hooks up underneath the safety. The ball was well thrown. That's one of the better passes Barringer's thrown all afternoon. Here's a guy, Muhammad, who caught the go-ahead touchdown last year in this game. Two tight ends again. Out of the eye. And a timeout down on the field. So with Nebraska nine yards away from going ahead, takes time. We'll be back. We come back after the Sooner timeout. Third and four for the Huskers. Look for Oklahoma to load up. The tendency of Nebraska down deep like this in a red zone is to go power, to run the football with Phillips, or to look for a tight end slipping out. Eric Alford is their touchdown guy from the tight end spot. Nine-man front. Look at this. Muhammad in motion. A waggle by Beringer. Incomplete for Phillips. And the Oklahoma defense responds. You know, they did slip the tight end out there. He was open. Looked like Gilman had gotten behind everybody, but they were looking for Phillips all the way. A lot of misdirection. Gave you a lot of different looks. Boy, that is a huge momentum swing for Oklahoma. I think Barringer gave up on his tight end too quickly and came back looking for his guy, LP, Lawrence Phillips. LP, long playing record setter. That's what he is. Tom Seeler now in to attempt a field goal from 26 yards out. He takes the short ones. And it's good. Nebraska taking a 6-3 lead. Seeler now 4 of 6 on the season. Folks, you absolutely knew it was going to be close. We'll be back. CFA College Football and ABC Sports brought to you by the beer that's colder, bolder, yet smooth as ice. Molson Ice from Canada, a land where ice was born. And Payne Weber, we believe our most important investment is an investment in relationships. On a crisp and cool Oklahoma afternoon, the Sooners trail the Huskers 6-3. I'm Mark Jones along with Tim Brandt and Dean Blevins. We have 7.03 remaining in the third period. J. Mills at the three. Mills out to the 20-yard line. Oklahoma is 105th in Division I football in kickoff return yardage. This is not a big play team. An announced attendance of over 70,000 this afternoon. Garrick McGee is 5 of 10 for a total of 69 yards with one pick on the day. He's a guy that works hard at the game, spends a lot of time with Coach Gundy watching films and breaking down the opponent. But so far, he has been unable to break down Nebraska. He's going to pass on first. Eludes one tackler, but is brought down finally at the 17-yard line. The first sack of the afternoon for the Husker defense, the Black Shirts. That's a sack he can't take. He had time to unload it and throw it away. He can't afford to lose yardage against this defense. Just throw it right now, just get rid of it. Keneally was the pressure man, and Harris lowered the boom. 
He was actually looking for Gerald Moore, who threw a block to late and then just tried to slip through the line and into the little flat area there. He's got to throw it away. Just throw it at somebody's feet or throw it out of bounds. There's a look at Lucius Selman. One of the great defensive linemen to play here at Oklahoma. Wayne Chandler carrying the ball this time. Out to the 21-yard line. Stopped by Troy Dillis. Sunday night on ABC. America's Funniest Home Videos and all new Before They Were Stars and Father of the Bride, which is one of my favorites. Steve Martin and Diane Keaton. Up in the Pasadena area last week for the USC-UCLA game, we saw where they were filming another movie in the same house where they filmed that one, Father of the Bride. You know, I think the crowd's getting a little antsy with this offense. They want to open it up a little bit instead of running on second and 15. Here they go to pass. Third down and 10. McGee's going to run. Nice move out to the 31-yard line. He got the first with the lunge. A tremendous effort by Garrett McGee. Brought down by Phil Ellis. He's a quiet and not a vocal leader, but he does lead by example. You know, just the threat of the pass, Mark, makes the defense think a lot differently than, than when you're in tight like Oklahoma's been playing. You spread them a little bit, now you got to think of the cover guys. Nebraska playing more man this year than they have in the past because of the speed. You lock those guys out there, you thin out the defense, you run underneath, and a lot of times you'll have success like McGee just had. That's out of the eye, they hand it off to Moore. Moore out to the 43 and another sooner first down. Troy Dumas in on the stop at a 12-yard pickup by Gerald Moore. Moore now 74 yards in 14 carries. Of course, last week he had 151 yards and five touchdowns against Oklahoma State. Tied Steve Owens' record, the Big 8 player of the week. At 230 pounds, Tim, he's the type of runner that can really wear you down after a while. Yeah, he's a hammer guy. There's no question about it. He likes to deliver the blow. Under five minutes to play in the period. Moore again, not this time. Only this time he didn't deliver the blow. Dwayne Harris did. And he says, that was me, 86. <laughs> get the name, get the number, and dust Moore for fingerprints. Moore never had a shot. I'm telling you, Harris came at him like a rocket. Watch, Moore gets up looking out of his ear hole. Watch this, here comes the play. Moore gives a little stutter step, boom, the pitch, and here comes Harris, bang, right here. Just lifted him and took him the opposite direction and slammed him down on that left shoulder. One of those ends that is really a linebacker playing on the front four. He's 6'2", 225, good speed for the position. Second down and 13. McGee brought down in a heap at the 30-yard line, the second sack for the black shirts. This is the Nebraska defense we expected to see early on. Speed, flying to the football. Look at Ellis, 41, is already in the line here. Look at this. He's coming. There's no question about it. They play a game. They pick him up, but he still gets through. That frees up the outside. There's Harris again. He gets a hand on him. Then here comes Peter, 55. He's in there. Christian Peter, who has a twin brother on the team. They share identical tattoos. Right there, they tattooed McGee. Third down and 22 to go. Boy, just line these guys up and point them. They're aggressive, talented. They're coming on this one. The screen pass, flanker screen. Didn't get many on that. Out to the 34-yard line. They'll have to punt. Great defensive series for the Cornhuskers. Albert Hall made the reception, but he was brought down immediately by Keneally. Yeah, but Phil ha Ellis, the uh, Mike linebacker, the middle linebacker, he dictates everything that happens on that defense. I mean, if he's coming up, that's going to free somebody else up because now you're outnumbering him. Watson Brown trying to get through to his quarterback, Eric McGee. Brown admitted earlier that they may have given him a bit too much offensively to handle. Daughtry to punt. Gets off a good one. Out of bounds inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. A 48-yard boot hitting Nebraska deep in its own territory. We'll be right back. Sealer connects from 26 to make it 6-3 for the Huskers. And Tim, 
We expected a close game, and that's exactly what we have right now. The Huskers seem to have seized the momentum now. There's no question about it. The momentum has switched. Nebraska's taking control of this game defensively the way they thought they would. That last series, two sacks, minus 12 yards. They forced Oklahoma completely out of their offensive game plan. Nebraska now has taken charge defensively. First down and 10 from the 17-yard line. Two tights, Shaw and Alford. Our open formation. That's Phillips out to the 19-yard line. And Dean Blevins has someone distinguished downstairs. Dean? Thank you, Mark. I'm with Oklahoma Athletic Director Donnie Duncan, who will head the search committee to find a new coach at Oklahoma. We'll cut to the chase. What about the short list? There is no short list. We started this week with 20 names. I have a consulting firm working with me. They're screening. We'll have our first meeting of the search committee on Monday, talk about some candidates. We'll get a good football coach at Oklahoma. We've got some good young players who are playing good today. We've got great tradition, as you know, Dean, being one of us. We'll successfully get a good football coach at the University of Oklahoma. It's a great time with David Boren coming. The enthusiasm the university has, this is a great job. As one of our coaches told me this week, this is a gold mine. Now, what the first name that surfaced is Mac Brown, the head coach at North Carolina. One report has him uh, signing on for five more years, an extension out there. I read that. I have not spoken with Mac about the contract out there. Before I did, I would call his athletic director, John Swafford, as I will with any other candidate. All right, thank you, Donnie. And Donnie has put a, a short fuse on this, hopes to name a new coach by December 15th. That's a lot of work. A lot of candidates. I can't see Mac Brown leaving North Carolina right now. I think Watson Brown, his brother, the offensive coordinator here, has a shot. And a nice shot right there by the Oklahoma defense, fired by Arthur Atkins, number 96, the junior. Donnie Duncan played it close to the best, didn't he? Sounded like a politician, didn't he? <laughs> Here's a look at Watson. Talked to him yesterday. He said he'd love to have this job. He thinks maybe last year he said he probably would have had this job locked. This year he thinks because of the struggles that he won't have a great shot. Well, look at the hit here. That is so nicely done. Atkins flying around. Phillips now only 33 yards to the dead. Under a minute to play in the third period. The shuffle pass to Phillips. LP out to the 43-yard line. Depending on the spot, he could have the first down. Sterling Lucky made the tackle. It's a well-designed play. They take Joe Wilkes, kind of fold him back. They pull the guard, fold him back, and let Phillips run underneath for the little shuffle pass. And it is a Nebraska first down. Lawrence Phillips, no doubt, will be a Heisman candidate next year. Came into the game with 1,672 yards and 16 touchdowns. You think about some of the greats that have played here, Rogier, Roger Craig, Keith Enzone Jones. He is following in that rich tradition. And here he is again, this time out to the 44-yard line. Picked up two. Don't forget, folks, tomorrow we've got number four Florida against Florida State starting at 12 noon. And then we've got the Skins game at 3.30 Eastern. And then live at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, Notre Dame against number 19, USC. Seven of the last games between these two decided by 10 or fewer points. Here it's a three-point ball game as we come to the end of this quarter. Well, as the Sooner song says, they're sooner born and sooner bred. And when they die, they're sooner dead. But they're not dead yet. We'll return with more action between Nebraska and Oklahoma after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Three, and Brooke Behringer is still in at quarterback with Tommy Frazier watching from the sidelines. First and 10 on the 44. On the pitch. And they strung it out nicely. Cannot play that any better than Oklahoma's playing it. Look at the game summary so far, Tim. Look at this. Yards rushing 87. This from a team that averages 359 yards per game. And Phillips, who they say is a Heisman Trophy candidate, he's rushed for almost 1,700 yards and 16 touchdowns. He's got 34 yards rushing today. Super job by the Sooners. And, of course, Oklahoma, three sacks against a team that had given up only four sacks all year. Third down and 10. Watson Brown watching from the sidelines, hoping that his offense can get back onto the field. The Huskers go with two tights. 
Turing her to pass to Muhammad. He's open. Abdul Muhammad. He broke it open last year, and here he comes up with a big catch down to the 14. Rod Henderson finally making the tackle. But the senior from Compton, CA, comes up with a big play. A 43-yard pickup. You know, Nebraska starting to step up now and exert themselves. Play action, zone defense. Look at this. Muhammad works himself to the outside of a zone and then takes it down the sidelines for the big game. Watch the pressure, though, that comes after the play action. Barringer still took a pretty good lick as he delivered the football, but he put it right there. Muhammad never broke stride, perfectly executed. Nebraska inside the 15. He's a tough little guy. Compton, California. They give it inside on the trap to Schlesinger. They gave it to the fullback. And he pounds his way down to the 12-yard line. That's one of the bigger plays this afternoon, though, that last catch by Muhammad. You know, Tommy Fraser threw 44 passes in four games. He was an excellent runner. Everybody knows that. Brooke Barringer had thrown 128 passes in six games. He's more of a passer. Consequently, he averages twice as many passes per game as Fraser. They utilize that. There's a look at Tommy, but they utilize that. And, of course, Barringer's big pass right there made this field position possible. And a second down and eight. the waggle finds Muhammad Park check that that's the tight end Gilman down to the two Simpson pushed him out of bounds that's Gilman's 16th catch of the year he's got one touchdown and I'm telling you something I thought he scored on this one we'll have to get another look at it from this angle but here's the waggle he's called this the 16th boot Barringer comes out, and there he is, 87. Gilman, now watch and see if he doesn't take this ball and break the plane with the ball. Watch him stick it out. No, he didn't get there. Good effort on his part, though, to try to break that plane with the football. Schlesinger, the fullback. Phillips, the eye back. They go with the jumbo package down near the end zone. Barringer keeps it himself. Touchdown, Huskers. You know, with that offensive line... It weighs almost 300, averages almost 300 pounds per man. They can almost line up and tell the defense where they're coming and dare them to stop them. Nebraska with a little more breathing room now, leading 12 to 3 with the extra point to follow. That was a nice drive, Barringer. He just put the dampers on Fraser, I think. Fraser was trying to get this ball game and probably thought he had a shot. Barringer picks it up a little bit. Sealer with the extra point. That last drive, 10 plays, 82 yards, using up 4-10 on the clock. By far the best drive of the game for either team. And some Husker fan just threw an orange on the field. What do you think that means? We'll be back. Its last two consecutive drives. First down with the kickoff. Four yards deep. Allen's going to take it out. He momentarily hesitated and makes it out to the 17-yard line. Yeah. Hey, guys, here's 315 pounds, 280, 280, 300, 300. Now watch this surge. Here's Beringer, the quarterback, on the quarterback sneak. Hey, guys, we're coming right at you. Try to stop us. Look at the line surge. All the white jerseys in the end zone. Virtually impossible to stop. The guys are that big, that strong, that quick, that good. The guys in the offensive line were telling me, Tim, especially Zach Rieger, that they want to go to New York for the Heisman presentation. <laughs> Said they'd even work as bouncers. On the reverse, Terrence Brown, he's a backup quarterback. Incomplete at the 38. Cannot do it any better. The play was designed and worked exactly like it's supposed to. The pass was well thrown. The ball was dropped. So Watson Brown digging into his bag of tricks, but that time it didn't work. Well, Albert Hall dropped a pass that was well thrown. Little pitch backwards. Here comes the reverse. Now that's number three, Terrence Brown. He's a wide receiver and a quarterback. He throws a strike here. Now watch, number one, Hall. He's got to make that catch. Went right through his hands. She with four wideouts. McGee sacked again. The surge 
sack of the day for the black shirts. Because that ball is dropped, because they don't move the chains and don't move it upfield, that means Nebraska can lay its ears back and just come. You're playing defense, you've got to know number three, the wide receiver, is also a quarterback. That's what we were talking about. Look at this. Oklahoma's offensive line, 6'3", 294. I mean, those two are corn-fed and hand-spanked, and the defensive line is 252. Then look at Nebraska's line. This is what we were talking about. 295 pounds. They're 6'4", in height, going against the 284 pounds, and they took that weight advantage, just blew them out for the touchdown. Third and 15 for McGee. Incomplete. They'll have to punt, and the quarterback is on his back once again. See, Nebraska just now dominating offensively and defensively. P.J. Mills on the far side, Tim. Waiting. Yeah, but see, he's looking at Miles, 14, reacting to the eyes of the quarterback. He knew the ball was thrown the other direction. So when Mills looked at him, he said, wait a minute, he's not even covering me. Maybe, just maybe a bit of frustration starting to seep into Oklahoma now. Line drive punt by Daughtry. Fielded by Moss at the 45. Moss dances around and actually lost a couple of yards on the punt return. Barry Switzer used to call it Sooner Magic when they come from behind and win. They can use a big dose of it right now. They trail by 10. The ball game, and it's 13-3 Nebraska. And look at the difference in the halves. Yeah, Barringer in the first half struggled a little bit. This half, 7 for 8, 114 yards. But listen to this. That last drive for Nebraska, four passes, six runs, great balance. They had four first downs, and Barringer was four for four, and they got the touchdown. They scored to him on their last two consecutive offensive possessions. This is their third. Abdul Muhammad made one of the decisive and defining plays in the game so far. Makovica and Childs now in the backfield. Reverse pivot by Beringer, who keeps it himself and is brought down and brought down hard at the 48-yard line by the safety, Anthony Fogel. I couldn't tell, but to me it looked like a broken play and he still picked up six yards. He did a 360, didn't he? I think this is the deciding drive of the whole ball game right here. Look. No, that's a design play. He was faking the pitch and came back against the aggressive defense, tried to find the, the back seam, and he picked up six yards. Still looked like a big play, <laughs> but it was designed. Brook Barrier says he wants to be a pilot. He already has his pilot's license. He's a pilot. That's the fly Jets. This is Clinton Childs over the 50 into Oklahoma's territory near the first down at the 48-yard line to Quazy making the tackle. NC State with a win over Virginia today. You know what? Teams in the yellow, the winners. And Texas Tech going to the Cotton Bowl this year. I think when you read about this game tomorrow, Oklahoma-Nebraska, Barringer has to be the difference with his passing ability because the, the leading rusher for Nebraska, Phillips has just 37 yards. That's it. That breaks a long spring of consecutive 100-yard games for him. That's McAvicka, the fullback, bouncing off two tacklers. Trying to get away from a third and is brought down to the 38 by Wendell Davis. This Nebraska offense, Tim, has the ability and the potential to really wear you down and play ball control. They hate the hard one, but I mean, these guys are, are huge. You have somebody pounding on you for a whole game, it's going to take its effect. Michael Vicka got banged up. You saw him get twisted at the end of the tackle. But there's Frazier, and he's got his jacket on. and Doesn't look like he's going to see any playing time today with ten and a half left to go. One of the pupils of Turner Gill, quarterback coach. Former great here in Nebraska. That was a shock yesterday when they said that uh, Frazier would be able to play. Needed. Handoff is to Charles, who fumbles it. And it takes a propitious bounce back up into his arms. Wesley Malin making the tackle. Nebraska averages 38 points a game. That's the fourth best in the nation. Now just 13 on the board. And Oklahoma's still very much in it. Down 10 with 10 minutes to go. But, I mean, this is, for all intents and purposes, the deciding drive right here. It's interesting, you know, Tim spreads and the difference in the final score is so often reflected in the voting of the pollsters. Third down and one right here. Charles is, no, it's going to be close. 
It's going to be close. He lunged forward before hitting the ground. Martin Chase made the tackle. He's right near the first down marker. Mario Freeman, the linebacker, came right up and met the lead blocker, Corey Schlesinger. That stuffed it right in the hole. And stopped the first down. What a great play by the linebacker, Mario Freeman. I mean, he just took on the lead blocker, Schlesinger, and there was nowhere for the ball carrier to go. Fourth down in this play. He feels it, but he stopped Nebraska from getting the first. Fourth and one, the Huskers are going for it. Schlesinger and Phillips in the full house backfield. Barringer says, I'll do it myself. And he's right near the marker. Downstairs to Dean Blevins. Dean? Guys, no injuries for Nebraska. How do we know? Courtesy of George Sullivan. George, turn around here and uh, say hello to us. 43 years, trainer at Nebraska. This is last one. And take a look at the smelling soul. Tell us about that. Well, we used to have to have them all the time when we'd get the concussions before the rejuvenated helmets that we have today and artificial turf. But we started in playing on some, a lot of grass again on some hard surfaces, so I thought we still did. So I've never taken them off. It's been kind of a trademark. Besides that, my wife can tell better why on the field. All right, well, thank you. And on your way out, take all the artificial turf in America with you, will you? Appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot, Dee. Phillips down at the 34-yard line. He's been there for 43 years. Yeah, he's talking about not as many concussions because they, they got better helmets and, and they're not playing on the hard surfaces. I think you also have harder heads these days. and <laughs> You know, you don't have... You still have them occasionally, though. He must have been playing when they had leather helmets. Been training when they had leather helmets. You know, I, I'll tell you this. You take the face mask off helmets today and you will alleviate some of the violence in this game. People won't hit as hard. That's a good point. Coming up next on the West Coast only, Arizona State taking on number 16, Arizona. The Desert Swarm defense. Back side of the eye, two tight end sets. Akavica on the carry, and he was stuck up the middle. Simpson led the charge for the Sooners. 7.55 remaining in the game. And Makavica is limping off the field. You know, I'm thinking about taking those face masks off the helmet, how that will take away some of the violence in the game. You see the yards by half, and it's fairly indicative. Nebraska now starting to flex its muscles. The other thing is, as players got bigger and stronger and faster, more talented, and talent without ego and talent, they also, they love themselves. I mean, you look at these guys now, they're dressing nicely, they're rolling into it. They don't want to mess up their faces, so they won't stick those noses in there with their face masks. They do take their helmets off, though, after this court. Yeah, see, they want to look pretty. That's the key today. Third down and eight. On the bootleg, Beringer throws it up. Almost picked off by Fogel. So it's fourth down. And Brooke Beringer out of Goodland, Kansas, has led his team to a 13-3 lead. Beringer's taking licks all day. I'm telling you, DeQuazy comes first, then here comes... Uh, a couple of other guys, they take him down hard. He's getting hit. Look, his jersey's hanging off. His pads are coming out. The one thing about Beringer is that we haven't mentioned he's wearing a flat jack. Something that he started doing when he had that collapse long earlier in the season. It was a big bulky one, and then he had it modified in the subsequent weeks. Ersted punting. Going for the coffin corner. Out of bounds nicely at the nine-yard line. We're going to stay right here and go downstairs to Dean. Dean? Guys, uh, Oklahoma, what a big drive for them they have coming up. And Garrick McGee is a quarterback who next season will play under his fifth head coach. He started at Arizona State and actually started a game against Nebraska at Arizona State as a redshirt freshman. But Oklahoma in a hole. Garrett McGee has got to make some plays for Oklahoma to have a chance. Of course, after that, Dean, he was an All-American at Northeast Oklahoma A&M. Where's Keith Jackson when you need him? I think he's doing the uh, Notre Dame game. <laughs> to Albert Hall, incomplete. I'll see old KJ up in New York next weekend. He's uh, being inducted into the Sportscasters Hall of Fame, and we certainly congratulate him on that. He deserves it. And one of them's a great announcer, the other a great receiver. Look at some Division One AA playoff games tomorrow. So you have it on that level. Why can't you have a playoff system on this level? I think it's ludicrous to have Nebraska unbeaten and Penn State unbeaten and Alabama unbeaten and you won't have them playing each other. 
Good chance that you can see Alabama in the Sugar Bowl if they get by Florida. McGee, 6 for 13, 73 yards. He's got to take a timeout or get a delay a game, and he takes the timeout. Time to conjure up the ghosts of past, like Jamel Holloway. 6.59 to go in the game. Now, Oklahoma has only one timeout left. So, folks, if they're going to win this game or have any shot to even get back into it, they've got to sell out now. Something has to happen right now. A look at some Division II quarterfinal games tomorrow. Portland State. Seems to me they had a pretty good quarterback there one time. Neil Lomax. Looking at Garrick McGee. Think about some of the great comebacks of the past led by past quarterbacks. Jamel Holloway, Danny Bradley. They've got one timeout left and 6.59 to go, Mark. They've got to start thinking about hurrying up offense. They've got to, I mean, forget being conservative, forget getting in a situation where you're taking chances where you may have turnovers. You can't worry about that now. You've got to go. There's a sense of urgency. You're not only fighting Nebraska now, but you're fighting that clock. Erstad opened the scoring with a 46-yard field goal. Oklahoma tied it up. Scott Blanton from 25 yards out. Blanton also had one block today. Seiler with a 26-yarder to make it 6-3, to three. and then Brooke Behringer with a one-yard plunge to bring us where we are now. McGee downfield has Hall overthrows him. He was in behind the defender, number eight, Tyrone Williams, but he was overthrown. You know, McGee took took a pretty good hit. He paid the price and gets up shaking his head, but if you're going to get hit, you might as well make the completion. Here he comes now. He's going to feel pressure coming from both sides and now up the middle and gets thrown down and catches a knee to the head. But he had Hall wide open. All he had to do is just put a little more air under the pass. He's two for six this half, only 27 yards. And it's third down and 10. Oklahoma checking into the last chance motel. On the slant, incomplete at the 25. P.J. Mills couldn't squeeze it, and he was closely guarded by the best corner of the conference, Baron Miles. Now everything's starting to fall apart now. That ball was well thrown. P.J. had a shot, should have made the catch. Here's a guy with 28 receptions. He can be a game breaker, averages 18 yards every time he touches it. But watch this, he runs a good route inside. He's got the leverage, the ball is there, a little bit behind him, but hits his hands. He's got to pull that thing in. Remember, he's the guy that broke off that 70-yarder against Syracuse in that tight game up there in the beginning of the year. And Baron Miles is the guy that partially blocked that Scott Blenton field goal attempt earlier. Daughtry's punt back to the 42. Reggie Ball. Ball with a nice return into Oklahoma territory at the 44. He ran it back 15 yards after a 50-yard punt. The Huskers still number one. Still undefeated with 6.37 to play. Nebraska leading 13-3 to with 6.37 remaining in the ballgame. Tim, we had a chance to walk around campus prior to the game and the people here were still pretty excited about the chances of the Sooners, but it hasn't worked out that way today in their favor. I don't think they'll ever lose that enthusiasm here in Norman for football. They just love Oklahoma. There's the counter trade of Phillips. Brought down nicely behind the line of scrimmage at the 48-yard line. Fogle in on the tackle. You know, you really have to appreciate the way that uh, there's an orange <laughs> on the field. People starting to throw oranges now knowing they're headed to the Orange Bowl. The only thing that stood in their way was was this Oklahoma football team, but you still have to appreciate the way Oklahoma's defense is flying around. Holding Nebraska to 13 points, still making big plays. Fogle on the safety, coming out of a safety spot that time, and he got a great lick. That's Cedric Jones, who's down on the field, the Oklahoma player. They can ill afford to lose him, especially at this juncture. He leads the team with 14 sacks this year, an all-conference performer. You know, he has really elevated his play this year, too. It became absolutely dominant at times this year. You mentioned 14 sacks, and he's a guy that's 6'4", 290 pounds. He's just a junior, and he runs like a back. Watch number 57, the top of your screen. Looks like he gets whiplashed, then hits his left leg on the helmet, then comes down hard with his right leg. So he got it every which way. He seems to be favoring his left leg. 
Tell you, when you're that big and you're that fast, impact hurts. Don't forget, folks, tomorrow, number four, Florida, against number seven, Florida State, a.k.a. Free Sneakers University from Bobby from uh, Steve Spurrier. Then the Skins game at 3.30 Eastern time, followed by Notre Dame and USC. I think the quote was Free Shoes University, and they don't want to hear that anymore. <laughs> you know, this is, uh, as they help Jones off the field, this is still a run-oriented offense that Nebraska has, even with Barringer. They'll pull the trap and counter with those big linemen, and they'll dare you to stop them here as they try to melt the clock the last six minutes in the ballgame. They go with their ace set. Shaw and Alford in at tight ends. Barringer keeps it himself on the option. Down to the 38-yard line. He's about four shy of the first down. He's done a nice job with that option today. As a matter of fact, their biggest gains have been the option play with Barringer holding on to it. Well, we will have plenty of time remaining, so don't forget to stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post-game report following the game. Get you some scores and highlights from around the country today. Busy Thanksgiving Day weekend of football here on ABC, and I'd uh, like to take this opportunity to wish my family a happy Thanksgiving. And the same goes here. Everybody everybody watching this game, just sit back, get some of those turkey leftovers. Actually, we didn't get any turkey. Save me the leg. Yeah, I <laughs> make yourself a turkey sandwich, stoke the fire a little bit, sit back and watch the last five and a half minutes of this one. Third down and four. And we've got a bit of a delay down on the field. Timeout, Oklahoma. The Sooners now with no timeouts remaining. And who would have ever thought Brooke Beringer timeout, would come Oklahoma. in after the third game of the season and lead Nebraska to a perfect 12-0 season if they should hold on this afternoon. But a good one, Kansas. 6-0 is the starter. Played the last four games with that flak jacket I talked about. Had it modified. Runs a 4.6540, so he does have decent speed, and he's displayed it on the last couple of plays. Well, 34 years in a row they've played this Thanksgiving week. That's coming to an end here in Norman with the realignment of this conference. It'll be the Big 12 in the South Division. Beginning in 96, you got Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Baylor, and the three Texas teams, Longhorns, A&M, and Texas Tech. And then the North has Nebraska, Colorado, Kansas, K-State, Missouri, and Iowa State. You know, that's going to be one heck of a conference. Mm. We had a, uh, an opportunity to visit with Carl James, the commissioner of this conference, earlier this afternoon, and his lovely wife, Marjorie. And, hey, they may just go fishing and play some golf. <laughs> Start a spa somewhere. ABC will be televising the Big 12 Conference. Pass complete to Alford at the 24-yard line. Barringer fired a dart. A 14-yard pickup and a first down. For Alford, that's his 13th catch of the year. He's a senior, saying so long after this year, from High Point, North Carolina. Look at the zone blocking up front, then just the fold back and look for him as he slips underneath. Nebraska hitting on all cylinders now after really stumbling through the first half. Phillips the icon. 22 remaining. Barringer runs that play again. This time, not quite as much success. Brought down right near the line of scrimmage by Campbell. You know, normally that's a very successful play. Anytime you can cut back against a very aggressive defense, let them run themselves out of the play, which a lot of young guys will do. If they have great quickness and they're very aggressive, they'll run themselves out. You find the alley to the back side, the seam, and with a fullback block or two, you can, you can break it big. 4.50 remaining. There's a flag down as Phillips carries it with left side off tackle. Brought down by Mario Freeman. They'll wait for the call here. Dead ball foul. Ball start on the offense. Repeat second down. Downstairs now to Dean Blevins. 
Guys, Cedric Jones, good news for Oklahoma. Cedric Jones' injury is not a knee, as it appeared it might have been as he came off the field. It's some type of a shin injury. It appears to be a deep bruise. Two wide receivers, or two receivers, that is, Juwan Penny out with an ankle injury, and tight end Michael McDaniel has re-aggravated an ankle injury. But good news for Cedric Jones. Boy, Gary Gibbs has had to deal with injuries and bad luck almost his entire tenure here at Oklahoma. Second down and long after the penalty. Here's Phillips. Going to bounce it outside. Brought down at the 29-yard line. Good defense that time by Simpson, who made the tackle. A couple of big plays in a row. The defense is not quitting for Oklahoma. Phillips really struggling. You know, they said he was a Heisman Trophy candidate coming into this game and, and certainly would have to be considered with almost 1,700 yards and 16 touchdowns, but he has just 18 carries and 31 yards today. That's it. The Oklahoma defense can take a bow when they look at those stats. Who do you like for Heisman? Heisman, I'm going to go with the guy up in Colorado. I think Rashawn Salam has really lit it up this year. and Over 2,000 yards, I'd say so. I still like Kajana Carter, Penn State. Third down, 15, play action. Beringer, Abdul Muhammad with the completion down to the 17-yard line. He's a couple of yards shy of the first down. Abdul Muhammad, I was saying earlier, is a tough little guy. He's just five foot eight, but he knows about toughness, folks. He's from South Central. He was the victim of a drive-by shooting a couple of summers ago, and he was shot in the rear, and he still has the bullet in him. It's fourth down and one, and they're going to go. Situations like this all afternoon, the touchdown and short yardage. It's been bearing on the quarterback sneak. Wide splits this time, though. It may be Phillips. He's checking off. It's Phillips. I'm not sure he got there. It's going to be close. Lawrence Phillips running over Zach Wiegert and Brendan Stye at the garden tackle spots. Nicely done. The defense read the same thing. The wide splits. Didn't look like a quarterback situation where they were just going to collapse down all behind the center. Wide splits and went off tackle and gave it to Phillips. It's awfully close. Simpson and Davis in on the tackle for Oklahoma. Depends Here's on the, the measurement. I think he got it. By that much. It's been that kind of year for Tom Osborne. Going after his first national championship. You can almost sense a groundswell of support and emotion, almost the same way they did have it that they had it for Bobby Bowden last year. Quest for his first national championship. Been so close so many times. And this week voted the Big Eight Coach of the Year. You know, I think that's probably the first of many awards for him this year. Dr. Tom. Shaw and off within a tight end. Phillips on the counter, slips and falls at the 14-yard line. Lawrence Phillips had problems with his footing two weeks ago against Iowa State, and he ended up borrowing Brian Pruitt's shoes. Brian Pruitt is a backup guard. Well, for the Big Red, it has been just one victim after another. 11 straight and threatening to make it 12 with two minutes to play. Struggled against Iowa State a little bit. Struggled here today a little bit. And that first game against West Virginia, had they not played that extra game, Tommy Frazier probably still would uh, be able to have another year of eligibility. Beringer brought down on the option play the 15-yard line. Tim, to get back to that point, you could almost sense that Tom Osborne was a little, well, very much disappointed in the decision by the NCAA. This in the so-called year of the athlete. Yeah, he was surprised by the ruling and the denial of the appeal as I was. I felt surely because of the situation of Frazier played in, in uh, three games and nine plays of the fourth before the blood clot and the surgery. I thought the NCAA would give him another year of eligibility. Treat that but first game as a bowl game. You treat that first one as a bowl game. That's an extra, extra game, that first one. And uh, they didn't. They counted that game just like every other, and there's Tommy Frazier playing uh, his last two games here, this one in, in the bowl game at Nebraska. Nebraska calling a timeout with 1.06 to play, and Tommy Frazier facing the sidelines. Tommy Frazier getting ready to play this game in his final game against uh, 
in the Orange Bowl, and then, of course, he'll be back next year to play that full season. I was talking about this year, but, you know, if you're Tom Osborne, you've got to start thinking, hey, Barringer just lit him up. He's going to 7-0 here as a starter. you got Tommy Frazier coming back next year. What do you do in your quarterback situation? It's a great dilemma to have, but a very difficult one, difficult one to solve. 106 to play. They hand it off to Phillips, keeping it on the ground, using up that clock, and pounding away at that Oklahoma defense. Dean, we're talking about Frazier playing his last couple games this year. Next year he comes back. Beringer's back. What do you do? Well, I thought they made a, first of all, I thought Tom made a great decision today to let Beringer stay in there because I, I think if they pulled him, it might have destroyed his confidence. You know, Frazier would have come in cold. He hadn't taken a snap in a game in two months. So I think it was a wise move there. Now, if you go play Miami for all the stuff, now that may be a little different situation. You may insert him a little bit quicker, and then you let him go battle in the spring and see who wins. Oh, sure. You hindsight now, you say it's a good call not to No, 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 no. I thought that all along. <laughs> I was going to argue with you, Timmy. <laughs> oh, boy. Barrier into the end zone. Picked off. Davis. Looking for a block and running out of bounds at the 19-yard line. With 16 seconds to go. So the Sooner defense, although beaten today several times, still with a piece of pride left. Yeah, the defense played extremely well the entire game. Sold out. Never quit you got 16 seconds left. You've held the number one team in the nation to 13 points when everybody in the country had written you off. This is great coverage. Look, they've got him top and bottom. Taking it at its highest point. Wendell Davis, the good pick and the great read. Barringer never did look off anybody. He just looked at his intended receiver the entire time. But that's a big play, big defense, big out, outing for uh, defense. 16 seconds to go. 13 Oklahoma Sooners playing their last home game. Here's and a pick you. right back. They give it right back. No, now it's ruled incomplete. Perrin Miles thought he had one, but he took it off the rug. The old rug, now the grass. This looks like a different place, doesn't it, with real grass on the on the field. Watch your wide. <laughs> Look this way in those old video highlights we used to watch. Baron Miles. He's quick. He's strong. And though he's short, he's got a 33-inch vertical leap. He is at 5'8", the smallest starter on the Nebraska team. Almost had the pick. And Tom Osborne calls him the best athlete on the team. Oh, yeah. He's a phenomenal athlete. All-American. Jim Thorpe Award candidate. Eric McGee going upstairs. And Miles got one this time. He says, you're not going to take this one away. That's his fifth interception of the year. He's got four block punts. He is a phenomenal athlete. Baron Miles now leads the Big Eight with five picks. The genuine Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Brooke Behringer from Nebraska, who is 13 of 23 for 166 yards, and Tyrell Peters from Oklahoma, who made nine tackles with a sack. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. And don't forget, folks, coming up next on the West Coast only, Arizona State, the Sun Devils, taking on their intrastate rivals, the Arizona Wildcats, ranked number 16. Phillips on the last play of the game. And the 75th edition of Oklahoma against Nebraska is in the books, folks. The final score, 13-3. Tom Osborne and the Huskers defeat Oklahoma for the fourth consecutive time, winning for the sixth time in the last seven outings. And for Gary Gibbs, it has come to the end, his last home game. Look like a guy that's just coached his last game. It's almost a relief. I tell you, the guy is a quality guy. I know that uh, a lot of strong feelings on both sides of the fence here in Norman, Oklahoma. But Gary Gibbs steps down. He's done a marvelous job, I think, taking this program out of a bad situation, getting some quality athletes in here. Gary won a heck of a lot more games than he lost. Brooke Beringer with a tremendous turnaround in the second half. 
You know, Gary Gibbs is a player, an assistant coach, and a head coach. His record, 211-51-6. Downstairs to Dean Blevins. Dean? Thank you, guys. Tom, congratulations on your win. Thank you. Well, we've... Oklahoma played a great ball game, got a great defense. We, we felt coming in, it'd be awful hard to move the ball on them. And, uh, fortunately, we got to play here and there. Defense played great for us, too. Now, assuming the voters keep you at number one, you would be one win away from your first national championship. Address both of those things about the voters keeping you number one. Well, I've said all along, they gotta, they got to do what they've got to do. I, I don't have any control over the voters. Uh, we played well. I'm really proud of our football team this uh, today. I think Oklahoma played inspired football. They have good athletes. I think they're a much better team than 7-4, uh, 6-4, whatever they are. All right. Thank you, Tom. Congratulations. Best of luck down in the Orange Bowl. Thanks, Dean. All right, guys. We'll be talking to Brooke Barron here in just a moment. The Nebraska Cornhuskers have been there before. Perfect going into a bowl game. Tom Osborne, the winningest coach in NCAA Division I-A football in his 22nd year. You gotta like that guy. Dr. Tom, he is a class individual. You kind of get the feeling that things might be different this time around when they go down to the Orange Bowl to take on Miami. Well, they're quicker. They've got a lot more team speed, and that's what hurt them in the past. Dean, Be Dean has uh, Beringer with him now, Dean. Yeah, it's not Beringer, Beringer, but we've all <laughs> learned, all of America now, it's Beringer, right? That's right. All right, congratulations. The question has to be, hey, guys, back up, please, just a second. question has to be, were you concerned about Frazier replacing you when you were struggling and your club was struggling? Oh, I don't think so. You know, Tommy was uh, cleared to play in an emergency situation if somebody would get hurt. And, and uh, you know, I just came out. We, we were a little bit slow in the beginning, and uh, we had to come out in the second half and really and really show what kind of team we are. And I think we did that. You know, I, I didn't. I had some bad throws, and we came back through the ball wetter, better and uh, ran it better in the second half. So a dream season for you. One went away from potentially a national championship. That's right. You know, it, it's been a long time. I've been waiting a long time for this opportunity, and I'm just trying to make the best of it. Now, do you feel that uh, you feel that you will be the starter in the bowl, or do you think there will be competition between yourself and Frazier between now and January 1? Well, I would expect uh, I expect to be the starter. I think it'd be uh, kind of a, a tough situation to try to mess with the, the chemistry of the team we got going right now. So I would expect to be the starter, and, and I think Tommy will be uh, uh, ready in an emergency situation. Appreciate the help, and I wish you could get your offensive line here to get these guys off of us. Hey, congratulations. Thank you. Hey, hey Dean, Dean, that's as hard as Barry got hit the whole day. That's right. Beringer, a class act. His answer had big team, little me, written all over it. And it's been a team effort for the Huskers. 13-3 the final. We'll be right back.